now that Mr. Banga is likely to become the president of the World Bank, it's worth asking, does India still borrow money from the World Bank? Before I answer the question, let me talk about a ridiculous WhatsApp message that was floating around some time back. This message said three things. One, Dr. Manmohan Singh had borrowed too much money from the World Bank and had thereby ruined India's economy. Number two, Mr. Modi had stopped borrowing from the World Bank. And number three, Mr. Modi had repaid to the World Bank all the bad loans that Dr. Manmohan Singh had taken. All three totally false. Now, you know, it's common to see false statements in WhatsApp messages. But it's very rare to see a message which is in, supposed to be in support of Mr. Modi but is actually saying that he has done something very stupid. Mr. Modi is too smart. He could never do such a stupid thing. No, India is still borrowing from the World Bank and Mr. Modi has not repaid the old loans. I'll discuss in the next video why India still borrows from the World Bank, why it still makes sense for India to borrow from the World Bank. But first, let's look at the facts. How much did India borrow from the World Bank in 2022? India borrowed over $4 billion from the World Bank in 2022. 32,000 crore rupees. Not a small amount. Certainly not very big in today's economy, but still a considerable amount. And as you can see from the list of the projects, they are spread all over the place, except that they don't finance infrastructure, such as roads, railways, airports, and not even electricity. They are in other fields. Two of the projects are in health, and they add up to $1 billion. So nearly 25% of the borrowing is for health, for improving the health of Indians. And that's not a bad idea at all. We certainly need to improve the health of many people. So. The World Bank's money is here for a good cause. And Mr. Modi is right to borrow the money for that purpose. And where will this money go? Some of it will be spent directly by the union government on building the systems. But some of it will also go to the states. And let me read to you the list of the states where the money will be spent. That's Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Meghalaya, Odisha, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, and Uttar Pradesh. So the money will be spread all over India. And you will notice that some of the projects have the name of the state. For example, there's one project with West Bengal in the name. And that means all of the money of that project will be spent in West Bengal. It will actually be spent by the West Bengal government, though the initial money will come from the union government. The World Bank lends money only to the union government, which then passes it on to the state governments. So now that we have seen how much money India has borrowed, let's ask, does India get all this money in one lump sum on the day that the loan is signed? The answer is no. That's the commitment. The money is made available over a number of years. As the project proceeds, you spend some money, you are out of that money, you get the next installment. So the installment is not fixed. It's not like every month, every quarter, every six months. It depends on whether you have spent the first installment according to the rules and regulations that have been agreed to. So once you spend the money, the first part, then you get the second part. And it can take three or four years for the project to be completed. So it takes that much time for the loan to be fully dispersed. And sometimes the loan is not fully dispersed because the country is not able to spend all that money. And if the loan is not fully dispersed, then that part of the loan is not credited against you. You don't have to repay the part that is not dispersed. So it's a pretty fair system. It's a pretty effective system. And I'm glad that India is continuing to borrow for the world from the world bank